just to let you know that, inshallah, um, we we are just yes for our records, yes, inshallah. So it's going to be live on Facebook uh, for just just our records, inshallah. Um, yeah, I think it's running now. Uh, Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker. Yes, yes, yes sir. Um, yes, doctor. By the way, someone is looking for how, by the way, tonight we have a darasa this evening. We have a, a darasa, we have iftar. We want to break iftar together. Iftar. We haven't seen each other for a very long time. So please, please do make your way to East London after this session. And um, someone was asking, they need help. I think the name is Farida. They need help. Um, they need help in terms of taking their little boy to, I don't know where, where Farida is located. So we might be able to allocate someone they can go with if we get to find out where you're from, which area you're, which part of London or wherever you're from. You can maybe put it in the message in the group anyway. Yes, doctor. Okay, inshallah. Um, um, my name is Rashid Kasato. Uh, like I've been like the youth, me and Hajat Huda, we are like, <coughs> been like a, <coughs> the youth coordinators, um, inshallah. And we started the, <clears throat> my apologies. We started the UMC with cancer about five years ago, uh, so that try to bring together the youth so that they can make their agenda for their life and activities, alhamdulillah. So today, inshallah, we are electing the second cabinet, uh, inshallah. So um, many people like they are no post, basically they are, they are just coming here uh, to just to share with us, to just to introduce themselves to us. Uh, and then inshallah, we continue. Uh, thank you for keeping time. And uh, now we are going to start with our Assistant Secretary General, um, Sister Shohana Walgembe. Sister Shohana Walgembe, if you can please switch off, switch on your camera and the video uh, so that inshallah, uh, you talk to people who, who are manyago and inshallah, uh, you can share with us the idea. How do you think we can take the youth ahead? Like in your own opinion, according to what you've seen, yeah, you can add a line there, maybe what suggestion you have to the youth or to the parent, inshallah. And then briefly, then we go to the next one, inshallah. Okay. Um, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Shahana Waluk. Um, I'm 16 and I study law, history and RS at A-level. Um, my plans probably for the youth would be to like, obviously get... Um, everyone as close to Islam as possible initially, and then just see where we go from there. But like, just plan many activities for kids and get them more involved with UMC. Yeah. Okay, and uh, where, where do you live? And like, which 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 area do you think you, you put more focus on? Um, because I live in Croydon, probably my focus would probably be on Croydon. I mean, the aspect of the youth where you think that maybe uh, a lot of attention is needed or the youth, they need assistance in this particular area. Um, it could be education, it could be drugs, it could be um, other some social activities where you think more focus um, should be put basically. An aspect of the youth is life because the youth is life is so wide. Mm. I think I would myself put focus on probably friendship groups if that makes sense like focus more on people that you chill with i think that definitely affects a lot okay thank you so much uh members in the audience if you have any question for shana you can just within a minute inshallah uh you can put it up but thank you so much um shana um that's our assistant secretary general um uh, shana walgembe uh, thank you so much um, unless there's anyone, you can just type a question. Actually, if you have a question for the candidate, you just type it in the chat room. Don't put up your hand because it will be, we'll be just uh, confusing ourselves, inshallah. Uh, thank you so much, Shona. You are very brave uh, because being the, uh, I will ask you maybe to, to stay there on the screen, uh, people, because you are very smart. Some people, let's stay there for at least 10 minutes, inshallah. Okay, it's okay. Okay. Uh, and now, um, if we can, inshallah, invite uh, Ryan and Shatra. Uh, 
Uh, Rayan, uh, or oh, you can just unmute and inshallah we can see you live, inshallah. Um, Alhamdulillah, um, Rayan just introduced you. Actually, you, you will mention your position, inshallah. Maybe it will be easier like that. And given that you have, there are two candidates there, uh, I'll ask you, inshallah. Should we start, Shawana, should we start with a lady or a gentleman? Shawana? Um, I think we should start. Pardon? Ladies first, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. So, uh, lady, you are going to, she's going to introduce herself and her position, inshallah. Yeah, and then we'll move from there. Shatra. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Shatra Nakalama. Um, I'm the Assistant Publicity and Information um, Secretary. I live in Croydon and at A level, I study psychology, sociology, and business. And yeah, I'm 17. Okay, um, Shatra, someone would like to know, like, um, you know the youth very well. What do you think should be the focus, like, like your committee? What do you think um, is the area? Uh, um, what do you think should be the area where we should put up more focus, especially for the young people? Um, I think, like, getting people to, like, understand and start to get to know where they want to be in the future and not like so they don't lose their like they know what path to go down so they know what to do when they went in, in the future they know a plan of what they want to do so they go into the wrong groups and stuff like that yeah like in your experience what has been the many challenges for like the youth um i think people not know like not having people to talk to, so they just don't know where to go and they end up falling in a, like a bad path, I think. Uh, so basically I think like the friendship. So like, uh, so if, if maybe uh, we think of having like a youth center whereby the youth can meet occasionally, maybe in the South, you mean you, 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 you think it might be able to help some young people like they, a place where they can go to chat or to have a cup of tea? Yeah. Yeah, to share ideas and help each other out. Do young people drink tea or um, I'm not, my name, do they drink uh, tea? Drink tea? Yeah. Do you, do you I've heard drink? Yeah. Okay. 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 Alhamdulillah, uh, that, is, that was inshallah. Shafiq uh, she's the um, heart, her position, inshallah. And uh, you didn't tell us which area, do, where do you live? I live in Croydon, near Addington. Okay, inshallah, mashallah, barakallah, <coughs> uh, people. It's, 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 we are, may Allah guide you in your leadership, inshallah. What, what do you plan to, to be like when after studies or after work? Um, I think like a, like a social worker, inshallah. What do the social workers do? Um, they like I want to kind of specialize in like helping young kids that come from uh like bad households and toxic households and stuff like that. Like lead them, like make sure they they're not alone. And, like yeah. So, so we we didn't hear that point. Like I want to um specialize in young kids that come from toxic households and just help them and um make sure they feel like they're not alone so they can carry on in life even though they um, come from maybe toxic households and stuff like that. Now, the young people you're talking about, are they like the Rayan, the Nawa? Yeah, like teenagers um, from like the age of like 12 to like 18. Okay, uh, just one last question. Uh, Becca, you can, you are free also if you want to engage. We're trying to, okay, yeah. Um, if there's um, um, if there's one youth who's listening here who has got problems in life, what suggestion would you give them? Um, talk to somebody and if you, if you have that, 
if you can't talk to your parents, talk to your siblings. Maybe if you're close to your siblings, talk to your siblings. If you can't do that, then you should find someone that you can talk to or trust in the um, community, like yourself or Uncle Ben, kind of like somebody that you can confide in, talk to them, and yeah. Okay, uh, someone in the chat room is asking that, um, do you know where, do you have an understanding of your root or where you came from? Uh, like, or Uganda or Romania, like you can't, do, do you know which country like your parents came from? <laughs> someone is want to know. So, we Uganda, like we got to those. <laughs> um, a little bit, I can speak some Uganda. And then, if you're getting Uganda, when you so we'll get Uganda. Um, what should I say? Do you get a Murugan answer in Uganda? What's your point in Uganda? Um, the Bampisa Shach on Akalema, um, Avanzana, um, Amanya Gabe is Sanya Namaganza, Ne Ibrahim was heavy, um, and then, uh, Uganda and Gibu no Ryan Kaseka, um, Mudako, um, yeah. Big, I think she, they have the roots. I, I think as a young Sally, they bring it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Alhamdulillah. So that was Shatran Nakarema, uh, the assistant publicity secretary, inshallah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Becca, can you invite Ryan? Ryan is a, uh, is a youth delegate. Uh, if you could just invite him to say what to ask to introduce himself. And maybe to say a few words, Baker. Yes, Mr. Ryan. Nice to have you here. Go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa My name is Ryan Katerika. Um, I'm 18 years old. Nazali Wawano. I'm St. George's Hospital, some of you may know, in Tutan. Bazar Devange. Ibrahim Mutebi, uh, he's the chairman for South, and Hajati Sanya Namaganda. Um, as you may have heard, I have been chosen to be a uh, council delegate. Um, I'm very passionate for football. Uh, it's become a very favorite hobby since young, and I feel like I've managed to build a very strong relationship with it, and I don't think I'll ever lose it. But at the moment, um, I'm studying economics and business at A levels, and I aspire to be in the financial sector when I'm older, so like an accountant, financial directors, or something like that. Someone's asked a question here, Ryan. What football team do you support? The best football team in England, which is Chelsea FC. Liverpool. Sorry? <laughs> you said <Chelsea>. Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so what does it mean for you to be part of the community? I feel like um, being part of the community is very important because people get lost and having somewhere you know you're comfortable with and but in relationships with people that you know you feel comfortable with is um I feel like it's very important. Mm. What what are some of the challenges that young people face that you feel like this committee would be able to address? Um I feel like having having um just that that place just that you know that will help you is very important. Well, like problems as my sister touched on a bit people or us young people don't like to express our feelings whether that be our um, siblings or family members uh, I feel like um, so you're yeah, having someone that's important to talk to because keeping it in, inside can make it worse okay definitely thank you thank you very much thank you very much and um ah. it's a pleasure to have you in the committee doctor do you have any question for me Just, um uh, by the way the, the, the audience you can only you can only type your question uh ryan so now ryan um 
if if there is a, a young person listening there who have got like a troubles in their life, what advice would you give them? Because I know part of your role, people, young people will be approaching you for some advice. Sometimes they have challenge in life, maybe challenge with drugs, challenges with studies. Sometimes they have some disagreement with the parents, challenge with work, challenges with sicknesses. When they approach you, how would you advise like a young person who has problems in life? How would you, what approach would you take when you're advising them or helping them? How would you help them? Um, as easier than that sounds, I feel like just focusing on what you want to achieve is very important. Having a dedicated mindset is, um, is one of the most important things I feel like once you put your mind to something there may be obstacles and things like that but um once you put your main focus on that I don't think anything can stop you and just yeah just uh talking just talking I feel like letting things out is very important when you keep it in it adds more stress onto yourself and uh you become even more stressed which is not which is not good for your health Um, okay, thank you so much. Uh, uh, guys, just to let you know that the, the uh, nomination is closed and these people are like um, unopposed. So uh, that's why we, we, are we are taking this time just to hear some ideas from them, uh, So, which is very, very useful. Um, uh, thank you so much uh, for, uh, uh, thank you so much, Ryan Katelega. Uh, by the way, uh, if you are, uh, a leader, if you are nominated, will ask you to put up your hand. Uh, now, this is just your chance just to speak to the community, to the audience uh, about yourself. And yeah, where do you see the youth from today? And inshallah. So, uh, unless there is any question uh, from either Shohana or uh, from the audience, you can type it. But inshallah, our leaders, please put up your hand. Uh, inshallah, I think we are going to Aisha next, inshallah. Uh, if you are, inshallah, on the list, just put up your hand. So that was uh, um, Ryan Katerega, a youth delegate. Inshallah, now we go to uh, probably the, five, the last one to speak will be uh, uh, maybe um, Shafiq and Umut Tahan, uh, inshallah, but we will see. Now, Asha. Aisha, someone is called Aisha. I think your hand is up. Um, Aisha, if you can, please, you're okay. Oh, yeah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Aisha. Amanya uh, Gangi, my name is Aisha Samongere. Um, I live in Coventry, but I'm currently in Uganda. Are so you? The signal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you try to call me, but they never say that. So I missed it. Yeah. Hey, um, but the so if the, if the signal goes, I'm sorry. No, that is the um, signal is so good. Which area in Uganda are you? Are you in Sansi Masaka? Where? Which area? Konge, next to Machindie. What? No, the network is good and looks very beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm Asha Samoge. I'm 24 years old. Um, I live in Coventry. Um. I have just finished my master's in physician associate studies and that's why I'll be practicing in inshallah. Um, I have been nominated as, is it the assistant health? Yes, secretary, yes. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, which I'll be doing with Dr. Hanan, inshallah. Um, yeah. Okay, oh, thank you so much. Uh, like, I know like being a youth leader, you become like a youth counselor. Now today, if you've been approached with a like with your medical background, you, you have, if you're approached by someone who is like struggling with taking their like have got a drug problem or like they go to travel the life, how would you yeah. handle them? How would you assist them? I think the main thing is being understanding and trying to understand their story of how they got to this place and what has kind of led them to do the things that they're doing. And then that's how you can begin to solve the problem. And I think it's good to just not be angry and shift blame 
but it's just good to just be as positive as possible and just try to encourage them to do good by kind of seeing how they got there and trying to just change their approach to what they're doing. Okay. Um, uh, what, like based on your experience, what do you think like because for you to for, from primary school, lower yeah. second, high second grade to the university, the masters, what do you think are the main challenges like the young people face and where you think they just come to have more emphasis on? I think uh, all those, I think peer pressure is one, trying to fit in with like people that you're around so that they'll like you. Um, I think also culturally, so a lot of us have parents that were born in Uganda and came to the UK. So there's like a cultural difference that maybe a lot of kids think that their parents won't understand certain things so that they don't know a lot of the time where to turn to and who to talk to about stuff. So they start to get into things and trust other people that they think are doing things that are better for them. So I think it's, it's like a mix of, of different things, I think. Okay. Um, so um, if a youth comes to you, they say that they have lost hope in life. Yeah. Uh, what what suggestion will you give to their parents, to their friends, and to such a person? So it's understanding why they feel that way. Um, because someone that feels that they have no hope, there's like a reason that's kind of led them to this place. You know, you ask them how long they felt like this, if they've ever felt like this before, and if they have, what kind of thing made them feel better. So it's just trying to understand the background of the story and using that to um, make them feel better. Okay, uh, so, okay, now this is a journey, by the way. You said you've done your master's in, is it physics? Physician, so, so my, I'm, I'm a physician, the muscle. <laughs> okay. Kakati, okuba ampiso? Bionna, bionna ambikola. But I'm still kola? No, that's it's in Noah. Okay, inshallah, Allah, so up, up to the more one, inshallah. Okay, I know you are in Uganda. What what message do you have for the people in COVID? I know you have some friends there who may yeah. be watching you now, taking time without seeing you. And I know your uncle Kasim is also watching. Send them a message because now you're in Congo, but now at least you. <laughs> <laughs> so just salam alaikum. Um, hope that everyone at home is good. I'm coming back very soon, inshallah. So I'll be back in Coventry. Um, but I'm just wishing everyone a blessed Ramadan, inshallah. And hope yes, you see what's going on. Where have you been in Uganda, please? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hi, salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa barakatuh. So currently in Ndumu, Uganda, in Ndumu Kampala, um, just in Sabah Allah, at Tawamu Bwango, which you see with Cho, um, Ngo Funa, hey, hey, we're to be all your girl. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> 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 Okay, uh, thank you so much. That's uh, uh, Dr. Aisha Simo Gilele. He's our assistant to the secretary, inshallah. Uh, barakallahu fiqh. So you have got any issue, like you've got young people need to be guided. Um, she's a doctor, so um, that's why we have like this, uh, uh, the youth are there actually to guide other youth, inshallah. Aisha, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for Name all your brother, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay. Um so all you are the Dr. Aisha, um, inshallah. Kakati to gain that present Baker. Did you have any question for Aisha? Maybe she went quickly, so I forgot that you were there. I was going to ask what, what she's doing in Uganda. Is it something productive or she's just relaxing? It would have been nice to see what she's doing there. <laughs> um, I came for a bit of a break, but in Bad Denkola, I've been working in Mulago, Chibuli mm -hmm. Hospital, IUIU. So I've been working with my singer and one of my uncles. 
Definitely, that's beautiful. Well done, because um, one of the things that we need to look at as young people as well is to try and see how we can bridge the gap within those in the diaspora, which is in the United Kingdom and those in Uganda, because you guys have a lot of experience, a lot of skills that would be nice to literally transfer them back home. So any young person out here, if you're doing anything, whatever you're doing, look to transfer those skills back home. It would be nice. And you might actually make a lot of money. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. <laughs> 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 Okay, inshallah. Thank you so much, Allah. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Okay, inshallah. Uh, by the way, if you are uh, we, if you are nominated, put up your hand. This is your time, inshallah, uh, for our candidates. Ba -ba -ba. They are, they talk to us so that we can know who our leaders are, inshallah. Uh, little blue, boy, uh, Little blue, just as call them. Um, you are the second, inshallah, little blue. The camera only does it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is Aslan. <laughs> Aslan, sorry about that. I, no, no. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Aslan. Ya alaikum salam. Kali bin nai. Inna mumjibali. Ya alaikum salam. But now, okay, inshallah, when you get a connect position, you are then any information you are going to tell like as if you have Aisha's done. Of course. Um, so I, my, my name is Asma Aida and um, first of all, thank you so much for thinking about each and every single one of us. One of us. I think it's such, a, um, it's such an honour to be, I don't know, considered for any of this. I, I recognise it's a very huge responsibility, which is why I messaged you, Dr Kasata, with some further questions. Um, but I'm 26, 20, 25 years old. I'm about to be 26. That's why I was about to say 26. Um, I work in the government within international climate um, negotiations um, and I live in Bromley um, in South London yes yeah that, that, that's that's who I am and I've been um, nominated for the position of education careers officer okay uh, alhamdulillah so uh, sister um, uh, Asma um, like you said you work for the um, my first question she works for the government my first question so literally if, so, if I was to bring here a family member and she was to be sent to Rwanda, would you be able to intervene so that they don't send them to, to, to Rwanda? <laughs> and I'll give you a classic response, which is no comment. <laughs> uh, okay, don't go on. <laughs> Sister Asma, could you tell us again, what, which area do you work in? People, people, they might need maybe your support. And... Uh, uh, I English, yeah. Um, like in um, I don't have to describe this more international climate or many climate change are a very big problem is environment, um, yes. temperatures, really dropping out in Uganda, when like everywhere people are suffering because of that one world flooding, so much is happening. So in Zenkola government or can or working out with other countries to to achieve climate agreements. So like Omani like trade. If you imagine trade agreements, while well, we were um, something called climate agreements, so in Colombia, we're on negotiations. Um, yeah, so it's yeah, it's very rewarding and exciting. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, just given that you are the education on our career guidance um, office, like there are some young people, even the parents, who don't know what they want to do in life. They go to school, but actually they don't know. Uh, they say. Honestly, what, what advice would you give them, or like if a parent who has a kid who doesn't know what their future is? is? Yeah, um, I think as you say, that there are so many different people have so many different circumstances and their reasons for that. So I think um, the most important thing is to come from it from a place of understanding and how it's completely normal and natural for people of all ages, actually, like even adults who are. Who have been working in those careers for years for them to go through like a career crisis for somebody that's young you know who's like 10 trying to figure out what they want to be in life so i think the important thing is always to remember that first of all that's a natural consequence of life but importantly 
to know where you can find that support and the resources that can help you um, get to where you want to be. And if you don't know where you want to be, then it's it's a lot of kind of internal reflection and trying to make sure that you have a, a very well-rounded skill set. So if somebody doesn't know what they want to do, um, that the best thing I think is to always make sure that we're developing our communication skills. Um, uh, particularly written and, and, and oral that we're developing, you know, our critical thinking, our creativity skills. So careers aren't, you know, it isn't always about a career. There's also skills development that's very important um, because um, careers tend to be transferable. But then also to think about it from like, there's obviously the traditional careers that we know a lot, you know, um, but then there's also the non-traditional sectors that are becoming increasingly important. So for example, university people are very afraid of student debt or somebody might struggle with that traditional learning, but they do, there are routes like apprenticeships. So there's so much out there. So the important thing is to focus on developing the individual um, and then pointing them and giving them the exposure to as many opportunities as possible. That's a very, well, like, yeah, that's a, sorry, that, there's a lot in that response, but um, yeah, it depends on the person really, yeah. Okay, uh, but, but if you have a question for us, maybe you can just type it. Chairman, civil uh, war nature was a journal. Very interesting. Um, what made you get into that post that you're in? For working yeah. into the you government, young, what like, made uh, you want to work for the government? Um, I think I, I, because I studied law at university and I thought I was going to practice law, so I worked in family law. But then because I really love, I, I love working with communities and serving people you can do that in law but I think in government or in the charity sector or um, in, in NGOs and so forth you can do that in a different way so I thought that working policy I could still use the skills that I learned in law school um, but also get the opportunity to serve people um, so that's 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 really why um, yeah I'm thank, not you sure very much. thank you very much yes you answered the question thank you thank you very much uh, yes. uh, uh, Lastly, we see you putting on hijab, and I don't know whether that's how you live every day. And one of the challenges for young people is to practice Islam. Some of them find it very difficult. Many at even some take alcohol, shisha, cigarette. That's the kind of life, especially young girl live. Um, what suggestion do you give to like a young girl or like you who are struggling, like to live as a dean says, especially in this Western environment? Of course, um, I think um, Dr. Kasat was similar to what I said earlier, like, I think it's, it's entirely normal for people to struggle. I think we all struggle, like, you know, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the, the battle is a battle against, you know, our, ourselves and our, and our, you know, nafs and our ego and the desires of, of the soul. But that is made easier by the environment that you live in, all of those temptations, all of those challenges. So I think a lot of that, a lot of, is, uh, sorry, a lot of addressing that is is knowing what the problem is and what the issue is, and importantly making sure, as the people that have already spoken have said, making sure that you know who to go to because there are resources. So, for example, something that I've heard often is people separate Muslim youth issues from wider youth issues, but I don't think there's there's such a separate that separation exists so clearly because the issues of drug abuse, of substance abuse, of um, unemployment of um, identity identity crisis. So, somebody put that in in the chat. Those issues are, are faced by Muslims as well. But all of those challenges are added on with also trying to wear hijab or trying to you know observe your face. So for example, if you're at work and you know all of the socials happens in a pub, um, do you go or don't you go? Like there's all of these. So there are lots of issues. But like first of all, Allah is with you. Um, we're not here for long. Um, speak to somebody. There are counselors out there. There are psychologists. There's there's so many people that would support you if you went out for help. And don't be afraid to reach out for help because there's so many people that are struggling with their mental health, especially in the youth that 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 suffer in silence. So, I am not I'm not a counselor or I don't have expertise in all of the issues. So this is very general advice. But yeah, just just reach out. Um, that's all I would say. Sorry, a very long answer again. Um, but that's because I don't really have the answer at the same time. <laughs> and the people that are more qualified to, to respond to these challenges. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Uh, that's our uh, career, education and career guidance officer. Inshallah, if you have some at home there, you have some youth who like, who might need some guidance, inshallah. She's the, our new education and career guidance officer, inshallah. And, and she's unopposed. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sister Asma.
Um, so, Chairman, if you want to ask any young people any question, feel free to just to pop in. Uh, you have a free way. Thank you so much. Um, Baker, um, inshallah, to gain that cool at the whole. Um, uh, Mohammed, I Mohammed. Yeah, or Sheikh Barak also be ready. Um, Mohammed, are you there? Yeah, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, but your voice, your sound is a bit low. I don't know if it's just me. Uh, yes, I think. I think we can hear him. Can, can you try again, Muhammad? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, that's better. That's better. Yeah. Uh, yes, but if your volume is kind of still a bit lower, but uh, it is better. Let me try something else. What about now? Is it better? It's like you're here with me, you know? So yeah, go on. Better, yeah, that's so fun. Okay, fantastic. Uh, sorry about that. Hi, um, my name is Mohammed Ntambi. Uh, I'm based in Manchester. First of all, I would like to say um, very well done to the organizers of this of whole thing in Marshall Valley. I think it's a fantastic initiative, especially for the youth in, in Uganda. Um, I studied computer science at university, uh, by profession, I'm a developer. Um, I've been nominated for the uh, for the as president Manchester. <laughs> yes, that, that's the one. And uh, I guess the challenge is, and I've got two sisters at the moment, and they've transitioned into that journey from uh, choosing A levels or choosing uh, the university they want to go to. And I think someone touched on it is having someone there to be able to guide them. You know, sometimes, uh, and I've been through the experience myself. You get to a point in life, especially when you're kind of young, and you don't know what to do at university, and you just need some guidance, you just need someone to talk to you, or someone that's been through that journey to be able to speak to, you know, to ensure you that you are making the right decision. Because, you know, transitioning or going to university, it is a big step in life, because you, you're practically choosing what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And I think that's one of the challenges I've seen within uh, Manchester. And I've had numerous kind of youth come to me and talk to me about it. And I'm, sometimes it's not even that they don't know what to do. It's simply they just need someone to assure them that everything will be okay. You are making the right decision, you know? And I think um, yeah, that's kind of... Thank you very much, definitely. Thank you very much for that introduction. And one of the challenges we've faced, the previous committee, is trying to reach out to youths within other regions basically like up north, you know, and one of the targets, which one of the things I would hope that this committee, the new committee is gonna do is to try and reach out to more youths in different regions, not just London. So how do you think being that you're the lead of Manchester, how do you feel like you're gonna be able to bridge the gap between us down south to you guys up north? Well, I mean, purely it's due to communication. You have to talk to people in order to engage them. And I think, um, a lot of the youth in Manchester don't even know this organization exists. So purely just talking to them, trying to engage them, the, the ones that I know, I will try to engage them and, you know, take a moment, take an hour, come to these meetings, you know, contribute if you can. And, you know, you might learn a thing or two. And, you know, sometimes someone might ask a question that, you know, you, you might be interested in the answer to. And I think it's a, it's a gradual process, but I think, uh, it's really just introduction to mm. the, how, to the how, community. I feel what you mean. How do you feel like this is going to benefit the people in the young people in Manchester? This process. How do you feel like it will benefit the youths in Manchester? I mean, first of all, you know, surrounding yourself with the right people is important in life in general, and I think Islamically it will be important, you know, to be around people with the same mentality, with the same goals in life, and with the same deen as you, you know. Um, a lot of youth do get mixed up in the wrong crowd uh, because there's no other alternative or there's no other option. And some of them don't even have friends, you know, as sad as that sounds. And uh, I, I think it would benefit them, you know, you know, get, 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 talk to people, get to know them, people your own age. It makes such a huge difference, you know, talking to someone that's 10 years old, five years older than you, than someone that's going through the same challenges or in the same place in life than you are. It makes such a huge difference. And I think that would be beneficial. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much. And hopefully my advice to you would be to try and set up a group of youths as well to kind of like help you back in Manchester. I think it would be nice. And also 
hopefully the team will also be ready to come up to Manchester and see you guys as well. It'll be nice. Or maybe oh, no, you can come down to London. Thank <laughs> you very, very much. No, that would be wonderful. <laughs> no, they, they are, by the way, the swearing ceremony is next to Mark. We we'll have a, a dinner. It's organized, it's being organized, it's organized, it is organized by the outgoing committee. So we'll have a chance of seeing Brother Muhammad and the rest, inshallah. inshallah. Um, and, and, so, but about the tickets, inshallah, we'll be communicating later. But thank you so much, Muhammad, inshallah. for accepting you. to serve your committee. You are your dad is is he hard in term, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you for following the footsteps of your dad. <laughs> yeah, uh, he's retired now, as in Uganda. Is he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, much. His, his father is a one. Is a great one. Is a very great person. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. Nabila. Um, you can unmute. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, we'll ask you to switch to put on your camera so that we can see you. If you can introduce yourself and yeah, what position you're in. Is this Nabila? Yes. yes. Or this is yeah. our, like, our finance secretary. She's the minister of exchequer, money, everything. So she, she's the, this is a big person. Okay, inshallah, attention, inshallah. Yes, uh, Nabila, you have the microphone. Um, Salam alaikum, everyone. My name's Nabila Nsubuga. And as Sheikh said, I'm the finance secretary. Um, yeah, I'm from London. Um, and I study business and accounting at University of Wolverhampton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, have, you, have you handled money before? For my own business, yeah. Mm. Um, Right now, I'm also a virtual assistant. So with that, I do like a lot of admin. I'm also a junior content creator for the business I do virtual assistant for. But um, my manager said I can do bookkeeping for them. So inshallah, I can get into it. Okay, so how do you feel like your skills are going to help you within the community, within the new position that you have? Uh, my degree helps me a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Right now we're doing finance, accounting financial accounting right now so that will help me a lot and we're also doing costing and a lot to do with economy as well so um i feel like with all the skills that i've learned i'll be able to able to do oh sorry i'll be able to do the role quite well because of everything that i'm learning within my course, um, the exams I'll be taking, the research I've been doing. Last term, we did an assignment with innovation and the responsibility of a business. So I have a lot of knowledge around business and finance. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Maybe the last question is because this is kind of a youth body. Um, uh, like, what are the challenges like the young people? Because for you, even to reach where you are, you must have gone through a lot of hurdles. Uh, what challenge? Uh, what challenges do they youth have? And if there's any youth listening now who is struggling in life, what would be advi your advice to them? Um, with me, it has been a struggle to get to this point. Um, I wasn't as practicing before, but alhamdulillah, it's been like a whole year now of me wearing hijab, a whole year of me practicing. It has been hard, but um, I feel like the environment that you're in, the people that you consider as friends, um, because your, your surrounding will um, shape you, even though you're not, you're not actually going around looking for bad people. If you don't have a good foundation of your dean, you, will, you wouldn't have anything to follow. But with the dean, you have a strict, a strict thing to follow. You know what to do and what not to do. The people that you're supposed to be around, people not, you're not supposed to be around. Um, when you're wearing hijab, there's certain places that you just don't go. You don't really, really feel comfortable being there anyways. Um, if you have sisters around you that are practicing, instead of them taking you out, instead of them taking you um, to the shisha places, all of this, them introducing you to ways that are not your mahram, they're gonna take you to the mosque. They're gonna take you to like UMC things. 
they're going to take you to talks even if it's not um, Ugandan Muslim community they will take you to different talks and they'll advise you when you're doing wrong like if you're posting something that you're not supposed to be posting but like, oh sister like what's going on like are you okay they will help you within everything if you want to start practicing if you want to start um learning more about your deen the Quran they will help you they'll aid you to be a better person um and I feel like when you start practicing and start praying things just fizzle out by themselves you don't really have to push them away they will just you will just naturally stop doing stuff so you can prefer pre so you can maintain your solar if that makes sense and um yeah I feel like now is a is hard because there's lots of things within that's being normalized in society that Islam just is is a no-go so homosexuality um having a boyfriend um zina, there's so many things that's just been normalized now that it's hard for people to hold on to their their deen but um I think there's a I don't know if it's a hadith or something a saying saying that there's going to come a time when holding on to your deen is like holding on to coal something like that I don't know if I've butched it yeah, but yeah, like hold fire or like, yeah yes yeah so I feel like right now we're in those times and it's, it's quite hard but if you have people around you that are practicing if you have people if you have a family that is you know very religious like mine or if you have older siblings or people like in the UMC to help you out you would it will be easier for you but if you're in a place where no one's really practicing everyone's um pushing you to do the haram it's going to be even harder so maybe if you have people around you that are on the same thing as you and you just take that one step on just put on your headscarf pray Allah will make things easier for you and yeah I feel like if if you're not as practicing and it is hard for you I don't recommend you leaving to go to uni like leaving your house like to go to a different city to go uni because there is it's a lot because you're there by yourself you don't have anyone that's watching over you. you don't have a parent you don't have a guardian and everyone there is young and stupid also they're going to encourage you to go out oh let's go out it's not good to be in the, in the accommodation by yourself oh let's go let's go to this um games night let's go to this do this do that you're going to be taken and you're going to be straight and there's lots of people there it's either you're going out or there's people outside like you know them christians that like to give you talks I don't really know what they're, they're called, but stuff like that, like it's hard. It's hard to um, to keep your dean when you're not at home. Like if you're not as practicing to leave to go to uni, it's hard. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Nabila. You're so inspiring. We, we don't want to stop listening to you. Inshallah, I'm sure that Inshallah will be organizing some further talks because it seems you've got a rich um uh, a, a buffer stock for the information uh, you, you are doing well you are very inspiring and doing well thank you so much so that's our finance secretary inshallah uh, she's unopposed uh maybe if you want to hear from her again yes they will be telling us uh, more about our youth activities inshallah so inshallah his assistant is called ngobi but before we call ngobi let us call the vice president for wales or cardiff sheikh barak I think he's the youngest on the committee. Uh, yes, Sheikh Barak, can you say salam and then introduce yourself? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope everyone's okay. Enjoy uh, Ramadan with their families. My name is Sheikh Barak Bagala. And I'm eight years old. And I am in Cardiff at the moment. Okay. Yeah. How is Cardiff like today? Is it sunny like London? It's very sunny here in London. It's only a little bit sunny. Okay. Are you pleased to be on the committee? Are you happy to be on the committee? Yes. Yes. What's, so what, what are some of the good old challenges that you face as a young person? What do you feel like this committee should do for the young people? Con continue to teach uh, everyone the dean of Islam. 
Okay. Okay. Inshallah, uh, we look Very forward much. for you to organize all the young people in Cardiff, Wales. Uh, inshallah, Sheikh Baraka is their president. And inshallah, we ask Allah to guide you in your leadership because le leadership comes from Allah. And thank you so much for uh, being a good person. Uh, I know that you're a great speaker. You are a Hafid. You know the Quran. So inshallah, Sheikh Barak. Um, yeah, what, what's your final words for the new leaders? Maybe what, what, what do you want to tell the new leaders? Uh, uh, how, how should they help young people and uh, they should continue to be kind to the young people and teach the young people how to be good Muslims, be a main example for all of us. Okay, thank you so much. Basically to live by example, like the leaders to be like a good example. Thank you so much. That is our Vice President Cardiff Wells. Uh, he's the president of all the youth in Cardiff and he's one coordinating them to our main body. Thank you so much, Sheikh Barak. Okay. okay Alhamdulillah. Now we are we are we have like about uh, we are moving very fast. We have like 40 minutes to, to finish. So we'll ask uh, uh, Mr. Ngobi, the, the Deputy Finance Secretary, to come and say a word. He is also unopposed. Uh, yes, uh, Brother Ngobi, if you can come and introduce yourself. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kansuwa vila uli wa mwapolide. Nenda koze salu Sawa Allah anunga mena ankule mbile murugendo runo kwenye ndo kumbala mofisi kuja kuneba za na hii. Ne komite ya tute nenonda jeba zoro kunte kama obwe sugu wa nsubila. Obwe sugu wa njoo kule mbeza nga ankule mbila. Awa haba yuti mu wanumu yuki. Yenze Ibrahim Ngovi. But I say, not speech in a very singer named Povidia Comotre, Nae, get to know you. Now, Nadia and I graduating a more economics and management. So I was numbered then call a more Ministry of Justice, more administrative department here, upper tribunal. Oh, Tina, we can be in your sours, you know, Pujako or Quavers. I would now want to say more ways to go. Pujako no bus for his antino and I guess I could pull him better. Awa ba yuti mu mungeli yonye singo bulu njini la nienda kiza kopla banga. Tuna wuli wuli chini chini kula mbira ngam presenting ba yuti mu mungeli yonye singa. Kujia konga au mukuru wa au mukuru wa finance finance department wali ayoge desti genda kongera kwa wuli chima chika varinze ingeli chini assistant yu yewa mama zo kongera. Zembani na kudamu wazi yes kuchunti chonda cha yogedi kujia kwa wabere wabere waliuti ina cha ya cha galokumbuza muri wadiambo kumbuza chumbuzo chonda cha magala na ikiwa vyombo na sisi head of department vya yogedi sigeenda kuhangira kwa head of department wa wabazo kuhangira kwa assistant tu ba tuina kudamu wazi mawego kujia kwa ya kuogira nga ye hedi tariyo umurundi omulana. Mkwena nga kwa kwa sebo obela chitulu chivu mwungereza era vizibu vya avu kaba ina vizibu chivyo vyo suvyo chiko bebi ino kulanti pisako nyo focus. Mbela mu East London di mu Bakin vizibu vindi nyo vizibu vindi nyo vizibu vindi nyo na kuzino pa yuti betu ina Sinza gamba chino chechi singa wa chino chechi dako na hebizibu binti nyo 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 na
we tu we tu be community nga tu tu ino luganda ndoro tino tu tu kola gani da wa mukwa singo echizibwe singa echili mbayo tini tino teva ina ba tu ba duki la ba ita go kugira ba ita go ogeza koko gamba ba tu ba zibo biawe kwa ya ina kuzino waluoga kweli between abazade na ba na kachawa na lo ebi sile singa ba funo wazi wunyo kubira ngaba Bagging the hours I didn't ever gamble with you. We are never by never youth, by never one to be a school of the chins and abo. Chiba children in your never jet. Never never have never mind yet in one hour to sober of creating and I will never generate a gazer called Balabang, Clavanga, Baba Gambe with you. We are never done in another never playing business never gazer called Clavanga, but for each sober cachuna, Clavanga will be sold being over cheta gained a co get an hour that one in a youth in a cousin. Abazadi tete juu bichi ba singa tino ni balavanga tewe tewe ina linki yao kwa taja na nava na 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 nava ni na kuzino na tete juu bichi tuone tina nava na tavo ba wuli ya tewe wali wao linki sopola ba ba connectinga ni na na abazadi kati fuo tuwa tu sopola kula anga linki yao ni tuwa anga tui yunga kula anga tu malawe vizi wewe vyo vyo na kujia connect vizi wewe vizi singa ni la vivi la kuba ku Kuwa tu chivo aba aba betu 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 soundinga na bo neva tuwa swal swal kuba kuba la ganti neva swal kujia neva veda kuba soundinga na bo kuba tu kuwa nga veda mu 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 community yaba youth kuwa kumi ino community geza kukula bangi eva 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 lunga mi eva teka eva eva kule mbiza kube kuro kofu katia tija veda cha chini wengine yokuula ganti neva veda youth tu geza kukuba la ganti neva veda Community and committee, a duo by Yamba, a duo is a co Balabat, Probala Gantino never, it is which on Nativaina, so broke with Anga to just work what is our Mopanga to solve me. Balaka Law Fikum, Oyava Demogad of Ibrahim Ngovi, the Deputy Finance Secretary. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Abana Galokumlava, he will be at the dinner next month, inshallah. But communication will be made, inshallah. Uh, now we move on to Shadia, then to Little Buru, then to Ibrahim Chintu. Again, then Omotani will be one of the final ones, inshallah. But we are finishing very shortly. Uh, by two, by three, we will to Yakubanga to Mazay everything, inshallah. Uh, Shadia, if you would like to come and introduce yourself. Shadia, we'll go the vice president, I think, for North London. Shadia, if you can unmute. Hi, um, Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Shadia Subuga, and um, I'm, well, I got nominated for Vice President of North London. And yeah, uh, um, and also I'm studying aerospace engineering at uni. I'm currently in my last year and I'm about to finish in two weeks, so yeah. What is your space engineering? Aerospace engineering. What is it? So um, with aerospace engineering, you could become a pilot. You could um, do manufacturing for aircraft. You can do aircraft maintenance. There's a lot of stuff was regarding aircraft, basically, airplanes. So ca ca can you fly an airplane? Have you, have you ever tried to fly an airplane? Yes, <laughs> I have flown an aeroplane before. You? Um, sorry? Shadia, we are not joking here. Did you say <laughs> you've you tried to fly an aeroplane? I have flown an aeroplane before, yes. A real one? Like that, we mean that big one, not, not this other one. The real one which goes in the sky. I'm unable to fly a commercial plane right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Just, you can use even you, doctor, by the way. You can. Shadia, while you always try to skip some of Uganda, while you always go to your neighbor, come of Bang, like that thing we see fly. Yes. Okay. Okay. Well, how does it feel to fly an aeroplane? There's a steering inside. You do like a, or it's like a bike. No, there is a steering inside. Um, there's lots of um, instruments inside which are like, the navigation, different things that you use in order to fly the plane that you have to keep an eye on. And um, you've got a gear stick as well. Yeah, there's a lot <laughs> that you need to remember. 
in order to take off and land and yeah. Did you manage to land it yourself or did you land at Heathrow in North London there? Um, no, um, so I did it when I was, I did it during my time at uni. Um, I had the opportunity to go and fly an aircraft at Hudson, Air, Hudson. Um, yeah, flying field, okay. Yeah, Hudson Airfield, but yeah. Oh, okay, inshallah. So maybe when the youth, when they want to travel to Uganda, you look, get us aeroplane, you put us at the back and then you drive us away somewhere. But thank you so much. Okay, inshallah, thank you so much. We wish you success. I had a question for her, doctor. Yes, please. Um, what is she going to do to try and bring together the youths in North London? Because obviously she's leading North London. So I think the main thing currently, especially in North London, is that the children, um, the youth aren't really together. Like they're not, um, maybe they don't know, all, or maybe all of them don't know each other properly. So I think the main thing would be for them to come together more often and like, yeah, create activities for them to actually get involved in. Thank you very much. Okay, yeah, actually she's she's been a very hard working person. If someone wanted to be a pilot, if someone wanted to go into aerospace engineering, would you be able to help them through the journey of getting into the position that you're in? Yeah, of course. Okay, definitely. By the way, I know someone has done that before. So if you want to network with them, I can connect you with them. And yeah, that them would be I'm quite, um, applying for jobs, so yeah. Definitely, this person is already working in that field, so they should be able to help you. They're always flying above Gatwick and that, so yeah, I can connect you to them, definitely. Inshallah, we pray that one day you'll be flying, flying us all over. Yeah, once we know, once maybe I um, I enter an aeroplane, if they say that, oh, the pilot is shady, I'll be just walking to the cabin just to say hi to you, maybe, <laughs> so that, oh, I know the pilot, Inshallah. Inshallah. <clears throat> If they, they just tell them to allow me into the, uh, is it called pilot cabin? But thank you so much. We wish you success. Okay, yeah. Those of you who want to meet Shadia, you inshallah will be able to meet her at the dinner next month, inshallah, when we feel like doing a proper handover. Um, uh, uh, Shalfa doesn't have data. Are you able to help her to log in? I think she was struggling. She's not at home. Oh, I think where she is, she's struggling with data. But thank you so much. Uh, now we go to. Uh, Little blue. I think she's uh, she's spoken already. No, there is uh, maybe they are sharing. There is another one called Abral. There are mm -hmm. two of them. Uh, Abral, if you can please come and talk, inshallah. Uh, that's our um, um uh, inshallah's assistant, uh, youth Shekat. Uh, she's number five's assistant. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Abral, inshallah, the microphone is used. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I just want to start by saying for giving me this opportunity. I know that a lot more people that are more qualified and possibly more suitable for the position. But um, thank you for choosing me for the position. And like my sister said earlier, it is quite a large responsibility, but inshallah, we'll be able to do it. Um, so my name is Abraham Mohammed. I'm a current pharmacy student at university and I live in South East London in Bromley. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Abraham. Uh, like Sandra Bila said that, I don't know if you did listen to her, that sometimes it's, it's very hard to be practiced in Islamist community. W what suggestion do you give, give like people are like struggling because it's harder for girls to like put on hijab, living in this community, People are struggling like to live as Islamic teaching is what, what advice do you give to them? Some of them have never had a chance to study the deal. Um, I think like Sister Nabila said earlier, um, it depends on, I think the people that you hang out with depends, like it can influence your choices and can influence like sort of what you do in your free time. Um, I know she mentioned about the university sort of like if you're given more of a free sort of reign of where to go to university. Sometimes the people that you hang out with university can also have an influence. But I think in terms of the advice I can give is finding sort of the right people to hang out with. 
And as human beings, obviously that can be hard to sort of determine who the right person is or if the person wants the best for you. But I think knowing, like having a conscious, knowing that what I'm doing is not right, or you can also get a gut feeling. Let's say, for example, if someone wants to take you to a, uh, a club or something, you would know that that's wrong and sort of sticking with people that will guide you to do the right stuff rather than sort of choosing the wrong people, essentially. Okay, Becca, do you have any question? Uh... Yeah, my question would be, how is you gonna help bridge the gap between the young people to literally the young girls, let me say the young females, you know, how is she gonna help? Oh, how can them, help? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. How is she gonna help to entice them towards the religion, towards the community as well? Um, I think for a lot of people, they might find it sort of, I don't want to say embarrassing, but they might be scared to sort of, if they're not sure about something, let's say, for example, about Islam, and they're not sure about it, they might feel embarrassed to ask, or they might feel shy, or like they wouldn't be sure of who to ask for help. But I think one thing that we can offer, like this includes like the whole team as well, is sort of being a listening point for those who are struggling, and also working together to help and like run sessions for example like drop-in sessions or like sharing contact numbers for like anyone who needs any help or any advice I think that is one thing that we can offer and inshallah slowly by slowly we'll begin to see sort of a difference and more of like a community sort of feel to everything okay uh, uh, barakallah fikum inshallah because we are running out of time inshallah uh, thank you so much abral this is uh thank you and you are following the footstep footstep of your parent inshallah this is our work and yeah if you need if you Becca, if there's any talk about any topic or like inshallah alhamdulillah our sister is half we are lucky allah enabled her to memorize the entire quran which is so i think she's a She's the only girl we have in the UK who memorizes the entire Quran in our community. I'm sure there are more people out there. For, for me, I don't know anyone, but maybe I'm yet to know others, inshallah. Sure. I know Dr. Anan is also a Hafiba. Yes, I know. Maybe others are hidden there. Maybe number one. Maybe we have others, but inshallah, she will help us to get them out, inshallah. By the way, if you have any talent, which the committee can benefit from where by inspiring them, please uh, don't hide it away from us. People are looking for role model to inspire them. But thank you so much, Abral. Um, inshallah, Baker, I think the, the, the future of the youth. Inshallah. I mean, I'm already pleased, you know, just by, you can just see the people already, you know, the people that are speaking, you can see many of them are confident. We have different various experiences, you know, people from different fields. so. Anyone that's going to be looking up to them is definitely, definitely going to be up for. Yeah, they are. Becca, you are right. They are talented. They have confidence. They are very they are confident. Very bright. It's, it's very much like it's very, yeah, it's beautiful. It's nice to see, you know, it's very nice to see. I think all of them are capable of becoming like the president or anything because they are very, very bright. I don't know what food they eat. Everyone is like, who is coming? Okay, now uh, we are going to listen to Ibrahim Chintu, the vice president for East London. Uh, if you can, please admit. By the way, if you are nominated, put up your hand. Inshallah, uh, we are, if you are nominated, put up your hand. This is a chance for you to speak to the people. Inshallah, we are be, we'll be finishing in 30 minutes. And I would like to remind you, please, after this session, head to East London. I'm sure many of you are heading there already. I see Ashraf, inshallah. I'll see you there very soon. I see you're heading there. Definitely. So everyone, everyone, please do head to East London. We have our dinners today. And also Iftar, we're going to break our fast. It's been a long time. COVID, we haven't seen many of you in a very long time. So please do make your way there. We're going to meet in East London. Definitely. Yes. yes. So after, after, after Ibrahim, uh, Prince Faiz is the, is the next, inshallah. Mm -hmm. Shafiq, wherever you are, put up your hand. Shafiq. Uh, maybe he's struggling to log on or, or is logging in with a different name. Yes, Ibrahim Chin to the Vice President East London. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Ibrahim Chintu. Uh, I live in East London, Whitechapel. Uh, I'm currently studying engineering and it's my last year in college. Um, Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing to be appointed as a vice 
chairman East London and I'm looking forward to work with youths. Um, yeah, Alhamdulillah, these are my words. Unless you have a question for me. So uh, how you could go on, Doctor? Okay, briefly, uh, why do you think your committee, your cabinet, where should they put their emphasis? In which area, like in the youth aspect, do you think you need to work on most? Uh, I've realized this in our community. We lack unity. Uh, most of the times, we need to do things that bring us together in our mosque in East London. Uh, I have this idea whereby once, like maybe every Saturday, uh, there's a madrasa for the young uh, youths that are coming up. If parents can bring their children every Saturday to Sheikh, children play, and after children playing, Shay teaches them Quran, and then after they go back home. We lack that in our community in East London. And the problem is we have the place, but the parents are not willing to do that. If the parents are willing to do that, trust me, the youth, the generation of us will be shaped in the right way if we are kept together. That's the unity I'm talking about. Uh, Ibrahim, can I, can I ask you something? I, I don't know how old are you, if you, if you don't mind me asking. Uh, 19. 19. Do you think it would be much easier for the parents to, to actually direct a young kid of your age, 19, to go to the mosque? Or is it, is it you yourself, you can take yourself as opposed to your parents? Uh, so we have first, personally, I've seen this. Mm. There are some Indians that are using our place. Mm. They are very, very young, but they have what we call um, passion for what they are doing. Mm. They come, they play. After playing, they start their own mother. For them, they pay for the place. But us, we don't have to pay for the place. So there is nothing that stops us, at least to bring a child. Once in a while on a Saturday, Sheikh Impanga is always there. He's willing to be there always to mm. teach us how to teach every young children, to guide them through the uh, Islam knowledge. Oh. Sheikh, there is no excuse for us or for the parents not to bring children to, to the place and learn something on Saturday. Once in a while, once in a while. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so no, much. No, no, please, please bear me. There's a one, one question. Now, what, what, is your, what will be your target age? As the representative of the North or of the East, pardon me. What will be your, your age target? Uh, if, if you are 19, if, if you're, you're saying that whatever Indian does, uh, I think uh, that what age are you targeting to bring to, to Derby Road? The age doesn't matter. But the words that we talk to the people, I think that's the actual thing that matters here. Because if we're talking about the age, mm. uh, that means I wouldn't have been here standing before all of you because I'm sure I'm talking to people that are at my father's age. Mm. So what I'm saying is that we do this for the community, not for the age, if I put it correct. I think you didn't get my question right, but I, what, I, what, I, what I'm trying to tell you that uh, how are you going to target the, the, the young one? Leave, leave, leave alone your age. You are now be targeting, for example, 14, 13 years old to bring them to bring them to the mosque. What is your target, you as a community leader in, in your part of the East London? Because uh, my plan is to speak to the parents of the mm. children. Yes. I will do my best to encourage them 
right now, um, inshallah, if everything goes well, I've spoken to Shafiq before this call. Mm. Uh, there are some ladies that are doing something really amazing. Mm. Uh, actually, it's uh, Ugandan ladies. They bring their children every Friday in this month of Ramadan. Uh, they break iftar there, children play. And I've got this sort of idea after seeing this. I was like, I'm going to speak to them, inshallah, next Friday to keep doing this even after Ramadan. But I want to ask them to do this on Saturday where Sheikh Mpanga, his madrasa is, such that these children, after playing, they gain from it. And then after they go back home and relax. No, 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 that's, that's, that's a very, if you're going to speak to their parents, I think that's a very good plan. That's what, that, what, I, that's what I was trying to get away from you. Okay, others can go on now. Thank, yeah, thank you so much. I'm positive. So, that do have a just that you are like, who are your parents? Mama and Gayalio. Okay, I'm Italian. Yeah, Mammy Tam Chala, I don't care. Saz Naricumra, Tario. Oh, Bambi, Maracum Bamfi. Yeah, that is a vice president East London. He's unopposed. Our brother, uh, Ibrahim Chitu, he wants to become an engineer. May Allah make your journey is a, a success, inshallah. Now we go to Prince Faiz, the Vice President Coventry. Uh, if you can put on your camera, and then inshallah, you, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this opportunity. And then I would also like to thank the organizers of the Uganda Muslim community um, to, for reaching out to us um, in order to give us the ability to make a change within our community. My name is Faiz Kibuka, um, and I am, subhanAllah, Faiz Chibuka. I, I, I talk to non-Ugandans mostly, so forgive my mispronunciation. Um, and I'm a master's student at Coventry University, and I've been living in Coventry for a couple of years now, um, which is why, which is the reason why I decided to apply for the vice president role of Coventry in Inshallah. Yeah, that's about it. And uh, what are you studying? Um, so I done my undergraduate in aerospace engineering. I think I heard someone said they were studying aerospace here. So it's nice to hear that there's more Ugandans in the in the industry. Um, but I'm currently studying data science for my masters. Okay, mashallah. I like in your experience, what are the challenges the youth are facing now, and how do you think? this committee will be able to help them overcome those challenges? Um, I think from the years of me studying at university, I've come to realize that there's two big challenges. The first is um, the Dean aspect of it. So a lot of people don't have an understanding or knowledge of the Dean. And as they get older, they tend to realize that it's something that they're lacking or they're missing and they're yearning, but they don't really know where to find access to it even though there's a lot of outlets online, but sometimes they need a little bit of a nudge or encouragement. And the second thing that I've realized is people lack an identity in terms of, they may not be in tune with their culture or their, their heritage or their upbringing didn't provide them enough um, resources for them to have an understanding as a result of which they don't, they, they struggle to identify with being Ugandans as well. So, I think one of the biggest challenges that I'm, I've faced and I'm looking to try and, um, and fix or solve would be to bring Ugandans together, um, Muslim Ugandans specifically as well, uh, under the umbrella of the fact that we are number one Muslims, but number two, we are also Ugandan. It's something that we, we need to be proud of and we need to acknowledge and accept and also portray to others as well so that we can ourselves be proud of who we are and where we come from. Ashraf, no, that's very nice. How come you're not on your way to um, East London? Should I tell Ashraf to stop by to pick you up? I mean, if he's willing to travel 93 miles to Coventry and pick me up, I don't have a problem. I'm sure, <laughs> Ashraf, I don't know if, you've, if you've already passed Coventry, uh, I don't know, Ashraf, have you passed Coventry? You can go pick up Faiz and... <laughs> I'm already in Tottenham. You're, you're already in Tottenham? Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't. I didn't know about it, and um, I've also got some other things I've been organising this weekend as well. So, okay. um, well it's nice. So, have you connected with any members in Coventry already? 
Um, I am, I'm, I'm not very well uh, connected with the Ugandan committee as such, mm. but I do know them and I have seen them a lot of times. Uh, we tend to pray Juma together at the same mosque. Um, so they do know me and I do know them and I've seen them for a few years. So you're going to connect and see how you can bring up the youths in um, Coventry, yeah? Yes, inshallah. Um, I do have strong links with the Islamic Society at uh, the university as well. So uh, inshallah, I'm hoping that there'll be a way in which I can uh, bring the two together to be able to organize some events uh, for the Ugandans yeah. and the open community. Inshallah, this is a starting point, especially those who are still in the university. We might want to hire those uh, conference halls of your university. We, there's nothing harmful organizing like a youth uh, convention at Coventry University. If you can speak to them to give us a place, then we go there. So I think uh, whatever avenues you have, inshallah, thank you so much. Maybe this is a starting point, but thank you so much, Faiz. I know you are very busy doing a master's, something which is very, very uh, so time consuming, but even sparing time, you feel that you have to give back to the community, to the deal. Mashallah you are taking the right uh, step and even following the footsteps of your parents. Thank you so much. Uh, you are very, very inspiring. Uh, inshallah, we are moving quickly. Uh, that's the Vice President for Coventry, Faiz. And everyone wants to ask a question about Nyonyi. No, I, for me, I struggle to fix like my bike, but these other guys are even, they know how to fix aeroplanes. Why? Uh, I, I don't, inshallah. So we are going to Riyadh. Sagala is uh, Riyadh is uh, like the our our youth imam. Inshallah, we will put a lot of emphasis on din. Inshallah, let us hear from our youth imam. Riyadh, briefly. Um, uh, Assalamu alaikum wa I think we would love to see your video uh, because uh, people have seen who their leader is. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'da Muhammad ibn Abdullah salatu wa salamu alayhi wa salamu alayhi Amma ba'd, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Salamu wa rahmatullahi wa My name, as most of you might have already known, is uh, Riyadh and I was asked to say a few things about today's election Insha'Allah, I'll do just that with me But before I start, I'd love to be 100% honest I have no education i had literally zero education on any type of politics whatsoever but that's the beauty of it i don't think we need it because uh when the rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam came to this ummah he was not just guidance he was also um an example that is why la khayra illa dalla al-ummah alayhi there's no good unless he emphasized it to his ummah wa la sharra illa hadrah and there's no bad unless he taught it, uh, unless he warned it from his ummah. Salawatullahi wa sallamu Now, if I were to ask you about the roles that have been granted today, I'm sure a lot of people have, you know, spoken about their roles and how they can contribute in order to be helpful in their roles. If I were to ask you about leadership, there are two um, points to it. There is leadership itself, and then there is the role of a leadership. Now, we need to understand that both of these are wildly important, but we need to at least try to differentiate them and take them apart in order for us to be able to put them together, because right now they're not put together the way they are supposed to. I'll give you an example. If I were to ask you the characteristics of a leadership, or if I were to ask you uh, what should a leader need, what, does, what is the core thing that any, need, any leader should have to have? in order for them to be a successful leader. And I'm sure we're going to have different answers, to be honest. I'm sure we're going to have answers like patience. We're going to have answers like um, you need to be firm. We're going to have answers like you need to be an example. While all those answers, yes, they are correct, but the true answer, which is an example to all the leaders that uh, have been spoken about in the Quran, all the successful leaders, the leaders that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us as an example so that we follow through their footsteps, what they have in common is what we call love. Love is the core of, it's literally something that any leader should have. If you have love, you're gonna develop empathy, you're gonna develop patience, you're gonna develop anything that you need in order to be a great ruler. But what we also need to understand is that being a, um, a leader isn't something easy. 
because especially in this 21st century nudity is being promoted drugs are being promoted the bars alcohol and all these are intentionally be they're intentionally being promoted in order to knock you out so that you don't have any of that leadership that you need or life if i were to tell you that for example the nightlife if you have if you go to the nightclub you're not going to lead anyone with life if your night is wasted in dancing and drinking the only thing you're leading is the bottle of wine to your mouth that's the only thing you're going to lead. you can't lead people if you are into nudity if you are into drugs one little thing happens to you you can't handle it you can't stand up and therefore you decide you know what let me just take this pill and a lot. You're not going to lead anyone. And uh, I'd love to also give this example. Um, as much as it hurts to say a man, I mean, in the UK itself, divorce rate is over 46%. In the UK itself, in other circumstances, it's over 50%. So how can we lead the ummah? How can we lead the people? How can we lead, lead the youth? If we can't even lead our own houses, if we can't even take care of our own houses. May Allah grant us the ability to do so. I mean, but what, are, what is the first thing that a leader must have? In the Quran, Allah tells us in Surah Al-Anbiya, that will be chapter 21, verse... Uh, uh, Sheikh, Sheikh, I'll ask you maybe to summarize like, like in a minute or two, then maybe you can, inshallah, add on at a later stage, inshallah. Sure, okay. Uh, that will be verse um, 72. Allah says, وَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ أَئِمَّةِ And we made them leaders. Who is he talking about? The children of Ibrahim. In this case, it's Yaqub and Ishaq. Those are the two children of Ibrahim. Allah says, we made them leaders. يَهْدُونَ بِأَمْرِنَا And they are going to guide according to our inspiration. وَأَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ And we reveal to them. What should a leader have? First of all, فِعْلَ الْخَيْرَاتِ Good manners, doing good deeds. And also praying, and also giving them. If you don't pray and you tell people to pray, nobody's going to listen to you. If you just simply go and pray, everyone's just going to come from behind you. If you ask people to pay zakah, you don't pay it yourself, you're the leader, they're going to assume you're probably using their money to do some other stuff. If you give zakah yourself and people do recognize you giving zakah, not as a form of showing off, but as a form of an example, then they will give zakah as well. Allah also says, and they are to us worshippers. You worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's going to guide you through your leadership. Take an example of the leadership of the, the Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the greatest of creations, the greatest of leaders. Take a look at Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali. They were all great leaders because they worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they obeyed His law, they obeyed the Sharia, and that is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got to guide them. Inshallah, that, all, that is all I have to say. Of the limited okay. time, yeah. thank you so much. That was Sheikh Riyadh, is the youth, is the youth Imam. Alhamdulillah. So, inshallah, we will we'll, we'll, we'll be having a lot of programs, inshallah, whereby he can he can he can address the leaders, the parents, and everyone. He is a very talented young man, and Alhamdulillah is a half you. Allah, I'm sorry, I Quran. So, thank you so much, Sheikh Riyadh. And Sarah Lewis to guide you all in your leadership, inshallah. Uh, Baker, I think you can confirm that there are a lot of talents, inshallah, people we have here. I, I can see you smile that, oh, the cabinet can make you smile. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, although you are muted. Inshallah, uh, Mbadesa Baker, if you can please invite the next speaker who is Umutahan or Hamima. Hamima is our. Uh, yes, Hamima is there. Oh, Abu Mustafa. We have Abu Mustafa. Uh, no, I, I let Hamima go first because she's. Okay, let's get Hamima. Faster. Hamima, you there? Yes, Salam Alaikum. Uh, yes, so Salam Alaikum. I'm Hamima. Um, I live in South London and um, I am very grateful to have been considered for the vice president role. Um, I am a nurse by background. I'm an adult nurse and I'm also a specialist community public health nurse, but I'm currently doing my master's in midwifery. Don't know what else you want me to add there. <laughs> okay. Uh, like the, the professions you've mentioned and everything, it, it looks you you have a you have a lot of experience. 
like uh, uh, what do you think will be should be the focus of like the, this new cabinet uh, given the problems of the young people they go through uh, which some we, uh, maybe which the committee knows what do you think should be the focus where do you think your cabinet should or will put focus on um, I think it's been mentioned already, and I think um, with a lot of the young people have mentioned about their friendship groups, so it's about us putting activities together to enable them to meet and make those positive friendship groups. But at the same time, I think um, brother, I think was it brother Ibrahim who mentioned about um, getting young people involved in the like coming to Dadasas or masjids um, like on a Friday or Saturday, I think he'd mentioned. And I think we do really need to start from young. Um, Mr. Kasim had mentioned 14, 15, but by that point, I think that's a bit late. We, we need to start thinking about getting them a lot younger from under five, under 10, put, doing activities and just having that relationship. So they have that relationship with, say, the masjid or with um, the community and being able to, you know, it's a place for of joy or comfort or something that they can do. Then they can build those relationships. They can know appropriate adults and just have that sense of community. So I think that's something that we need to think about. And it also goes in line with what Mr. Baker had said about bridging the gap back home in Africa. So just them having that identity and knowing that they belong to a community, I think that's really important. I mean, uh, being a vice president, you almost you are the president, and you have seen your cabinet full of very many talents. How are mm. you going to manage those talents? Uh, leave alone the other one, like leadership. Uh, what, what, any word you have for them? How? Um, I think they'll be managing themselves. They have the skills to manage themselves, but obviously it will be about um, tapping into everyone's strength. So everyone will have something that they're going to be either passionate about or particularly good at. And it's about being able to um, support them to, you know, in, into the right direction where it can be used. So, for example, um, that sister who um, is a cultural, no, what was it? It's that uh, climate specialist, I'm going to call it, I can't remember her official title. So um, we can tap into whatever um, specialities that people have and use those skills appropriately to support the community and to help us to grow. I mean, me personally, um, my focus is going to be on health, both physical and mental health, because I come from a health background and just thinking about how we can take care of ourselves um, physically and mentally, because um, that also is in line with the religion. You know, we have to take care of ourselves. That's something that we need to do. Our, nothing belongs to us, including our bodies. So we're going to be asked about how we took care of ourselves. Okay, Sheikh Kasim Gulma has a question for you, Chairman Seo. Yes, Mr. Kasim. Uh, Sheikh Kasim Gulma. I think he's muted. Okay. Um... um, I've just done the, seen a question from Um Shakir. Shakir, I might not be saying it correctly. But that is something that we would definitely consider. I think um, there's been um, youth activities in the past, not quite to Uganda or Egypt, but that's certainly something that we would consider um, as part of things for the young people to do. Okay, uh, maybe it's a, so, okay. Maybe it's a proposal, maybe which we will think about. Uh, I have yeah. a question for me. What does it mean for you to be part of the committee, to be serving the community? It's a privilege. Um, it's something that actually, it, it's it, to be entrusted with such a responsibility it is a privilege. And I look forward to being able to, um, you know, help take the youth forward. Big shoes to fill, Baker. And it's very sad that you will no longer be in that leadership role. Um, but at the same time, it's very exciting to be working with Shafiq and seeing what new ideas and how he's going to bring the youth forward. But it's something that is very rewarding and um, it's an opportunity to help um, nurture our youth, our future leaders. Definitely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sister. Actually, we are proud of you, uh, like you following the first step of your dad, because he's kind of a community leader, almost from the his time. Not kind of. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, English is not my first language. <laughs> English is not my first language. That's my excuse. You, like your parents have, have, they have been leaders from time immemorial. Like it's kind mm. of a voluntary work, and they, he does it like full time, twenty four hours, and he's still yeah, preaching. Sure. And that's a life he decided to live. But even following 
his fourth step is something which is great. May Allah guide you and give you rewards. Amen. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Because it's kind of this is voluntary work. Uh, but thank yeah. you. So much. And uh, there's a customer who is over a thing in Julie Mora with those and can be white and Yakuza, you go so and a quiz. But in those, I could go on Salam Alekum or Rahmatullahi or Kat. Alekum Salam or Rahmatullahi or Barakat. You are Hamilama, Mamma, or Sima, but Yakum or Manamunga, the Rambaraka, inshallah. Amen, inshallah. Inshallah. Barakala Fikum. Inshallah. Okay, now we have, uh, inshallah, they would say, Baker, Baker will speak the last. So, we go to Abu Najiba, our Dawa secretary, then we go to the president Shafiq, then Baker will conclude. But maybe we others will have a chance, inshallah. We have a dinner uh, to get another communication. And, you know, Bobanga, you have been nominated. We did ask you to put up your hand so that we can see you easily and people can see who their leaders are. So, uh, Abu Mustafa, briefly, uh, our Dawa secretary, you have the microphone. Is Beck asking that that one Abu, Abu Mustafa as many questions as you want, please? About fifteen of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it is not time. Now, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, In Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu, Anastain, who wanna start Firo, when I owe the Bilahim in Shuri and Fusna, when we say at Amalina, Maya de la Fala Mudilla, or Mayo de la Fala Hadiella. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق حديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث حديث محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشر الأمور مؤدثاتها وكل مؤدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار لعظم الله وإياكم من النار What you just had uh, brothers and sisters is called the Khutbat al Haja. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to do the Khutbat al Haja on a Friday on Yom al Jum'ah. He would do the Khutbat al Haja when there was a nikah or a wedding. He would do the Khutbat al Haja some of the times when he used to speak to his companions. So this is something that we'd normally forget. So I thought we would revive this Sunnah bi Idul Rahman as I'm given the opportunity to speak in front of you. Barakallahu fikum for the opportunity to speak and to give a bit of nasiha uh, uh, as I was chosen to be the DAWA secretary and also uh, previously I was part of the religious committee uh, Rahman, and uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to fulfill our ob obligation like he says in Surah Al-Ma'idah which is the fifth chapter of the Quran uh, Al-Ma'idah the table spread wide uh, the table of food spread wide and it's uh, the, the first verse, he said, Ya ayuhalladina aman, all you who believe, he called upon those who are believers. He called upon those who are believers in the sake of fulfill your obligation, your obligations. Uh, so he called upon that. And also Allah says in another surah, which is Surah Al-Mu'minun, which is the 23rd chapter of the Quran, and the verse, I believe is verse, um, verse, uh, Eight, where he says, yeah, he was talking about the characteristics of those who believe. And as I said, when he says, yeah, you are Amal, he's talking about those who believe. Now in this chapter, he talked about the different characteristics uh, regarding the believers. One of them that he mentioned, he said, uh, he said, and those who are faithfully uh, true to their what? To their amana. To their all the duties which Allah has ordained, honesty, or responsibility, and trust, uh, you, you know, and so and so on and so forth, and also regarding their covenants, what are they? They do. They are true to them. They are true. They are faithful, true to those. So leadership, Subhanallah, for me, 
leadership as as the mufassirin i'm not just me subhanallah I'm, who am i to say but the people of tafsir when they talked about this ayah they said this is uh regarding uh leadership is a trust okay leadership is a trust so if someone if you're given a position of leadership you have to know that this is something that you have been given, not to discourage anyone to run away and say, oh no, we've been given responsibility, I'm not gonna be able to do it. No, as a matter of fact, like Sheikh Riyadh said, Hafid Riyadh, mashallah, he said regarding this, that take the responsibility on, be Idr Rahman, and you expect a reward from Allah. Do it with ikhlas, sincerity, okay? Do it lillah, okay? That you're worshiping Allah as you're doing this, and also, that you expect, you anticipate a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So leadership is something that is uh, that is a trust. Okay, so you've been trusted with something important. Do not misuse it. Do not abuse it. Take it as something that is important and the way you lead your people. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, because uh, leadership is something that you will be uh, asked about. Uh, Allah will ask you about it. Okay, not again, not to discourage anyone, but as a matter of fact, this is to be the Rahman to inspire them with the permission of Allah. So, uh, when it comes to leadership, the Prophet say, Kul, uh, uh, He said, All of you are shepherds. This hadith is Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, so it's authentic. He said, All of you are shepherds. Okay, and every single one of you will be asked about what they uh, about their flock. Okay, so he used the example of that sort of thing, uh, shepherds, what do they take care of, what sheep and goats and stuff like that, you know, but we, we know for real that uh, he gave examples, by the way, one of them, he mentioned the imam or the leader, okay, imam in Arabic, it can be leader, it can be the one who leads salah, but one of them is the person who is a leader, so what do they do? They are responsible for the people that they are leading. So it's very important, subhanAllah, that we've give, been given this and we've been trusted that we try to fulfill it to the best of our ability, of course. Do you understand? So please, if you've been made given a, a position, this is my advice going to me first. Usi, nafsi. I'm advising myself first. Wa usiku, and I advise you as well. All the brothers and sisters that have been given different roles and to have the taqwa of Allah. Be Allah conscious in what you do. So ask yourself, would Allah be happy with what I'm doing? Uh, with this, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward me for it, or will He punish me? Uh, where Allah protect us from His punishment, but please, uh, help us, let's help each other, okay? Let's do we, let's work as a team. Don't leave it just for someone else, don't leave it for Shafiq, the president, don't leave it to Hani, the assist, uh, vice president, don't leave it for Faiz, or don't, don't leave it for Sheikh Riyad or whoever the position are. Uh, the, the, important positions everyone has an important position don't leave it for them please come up and help each other come together this is very important brothers and sisters to work together if you just leave it for someone else then it's gonna be difficult and maybe the other people uh, will not be inspired or they might think i have too much on my shoulder and they said i can't do this they will resign we ask allah to protect us from that no one resigns everyone keeps their position and as a matter of fact, the only way we can do that by inspiring each other, working together, you know, you know, uh, working alongside each other, protecting each other, you know, giving ex making excuses for each other. Maybe someone falls short, he's got a shot coming here and there, religiously or not religiously, they are protected by Idr Rahman, they're covered, they're covered up, the faults. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, uh, the Prophet uh, sallallahu uh, alayhi wa sallam said, Sheikh Naib, I, I, I will humbly request you to summarize the one minute, inshallah. Inshallah, I will summarize. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the person who will be, uh, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he covers the faults of the past, of, 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 of the past, of the, of the of the, of the person, uh, the person who will be uncovered, the person say that the person who can be, who will be uncovered is the one who uncovers other people's faults, okay? And there's another hadith, subhanAllah, that is similar to that. Man uh, satara musliman, satara Allahu fi dunya wa akhir. Allah, whoever covers the other person's fault, Allah will cover them. Basically, what am I bringing them in this dunya and akhir? What am I bringing this? is that leadership, there is gonna be mistakes, okay? And don't look at people's mistakes and say, that person is not qualified anymore, we don't want them. 
let's sit down and talk about it and we try to resolve the issues with Idul Rahman. And maybe one more one request that I see that we will need the Idul Rahman. I'm requesting it right here. <laughs> no one asked me to request this, but please, uh, if it's possible, I would request if we can have, uh, because we've got so many old people that are, you know, are growing up, our young sisters, our, our sisters and our brothers, they are growing up. We, if we can have a committee that helps these brothers and sisters to get married. Do you understand? Be in the Rahman. That would be very important as well. Uh, inshallah, I'll stop there. Barakallah. Barakallah. Baker, I think the, the new committee is very, very vibrant. I think he's a great speaker because for me, I used to see him as a moderator, but I think he's a great speaker. Yeah, he's a great speaker. Mustafa. Thank you so much, inshallah. Uh, Ibra, um, Ibrahim Matovo Owe uh, I don't know, I can't see you. You said your hand is up, but I can't see you. Uh, Ibrahim Matovo Owe Krore, Sao Seko Egunio, then you speak, then Shafiq will be uh, then to conclude. Ibrahim Ogambe Kori, Naye Seko Ina Ibrahim Ina Gola Owe Krore, is the vice president for Krore. Where are you? Bane Walwa Mulabako. Okay, maybe now we go to Shafiq, inshallah, our president. Ibrahim, I can't see you really. I, I hope you won't blame me. Uh, Ibrahim Matovu. Okay, inshallah, uh, Shafiq uh, is our, um, um, our president who is also an opposed. Shafiq, you have the microphone. Shafiq, if you can please unmute and put on your video. Uh, Shafiq. Um, <laughs> Sorry guys, um, I'm not well at the moment because of cold flu and a bad cough, but alhamdulillah I'll be fine. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and may all blessing and peace be to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I would like to thank, to thank the UMC, the whole committee. I would like to thank all our leaders in terms of like the chairman, our sheikhs in the community and all the previous committee that have been representing us to the new committee. One advice I would like to give you, this is a uh, voluntary work. You don't get paid and everything you do is to contribute to the deen when you've left this world or when you left this earth. So I would like to encourage you, don't get, um, come in, feel free. All the shades have told you what to do, what a good leader is. At the moment, you know what leaders we're dealing with in the um, at the moment. An example can be the one of the main person of this country. So let us try to be good leaders. And let us try to, you know, not give away the amount that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. It's a challenging journey, but as you know, in life, nothing comes at ease. Sometimes it's up, sometimes we're down. But what keeps us going is the togetherness that we have. We don't stop, we keep going. We encourage other people to join us. We go everywhere. That's the rule, and you know, we pray that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala accept this work. With that, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Chairman Muguruma, does anyone have, have any question for Shafiq? Um, um, inshallah, Chairman Muguruma, if you have, or, uh, we can. Uh, brother Shafiq, where will 
Okay. In terms of focus, where will you put your main focus, like with your cabinet, according to the way you see it? Um, try, um, the focus will be trying to reach out more, cover more parts and area of England. Try to include, spread the word more to other young people. And at the moment, we've been faced with COVID, which kind of like has put us to go back. So we need to go, we need to dig deeper to try to get the young people. These two years of COVID has changed the way we live. It has affected the people who have knowledge. We have, it has affected everything. It has affected doctors. So it's going to be really a hard journey. But our main focus as, or our main goal with all the committee, inshallah, when we have time and we sit down to lay out what we want to achieve, that will be the main one of our main goals to try to reach out more to go back and get these people who have been affected by the pandemic and we come be together as one community as a one as a one community yeah thank you so much president shafiq uh, may allah guide you and your team uh, that is Shafiq, is unopposed, alhamdulillah. The rest of the leaders, inshallah, will be, there will be a handover next month at our dinner. Maybe the outgoing president Baker will, will, will say something about it. Inshallah, it's not possible to have all everyone to speak here today. Uh, but just as a recap, uh, the president is Shafiq Walusimbi, Vice President Hamima Semambo, Secretary General uh, Shalfa Yudaya Subuga. Assistant Secretary General Shuhana Walgembe, Finance Minister Nabila Nansamba, Assistant Finance Ibrahim Ngobi, Dawa Secretary Najib Munyuchi, Assistant Dawa Secretary Ryan Siradra Sewadda, Youth Imam Shekri Abdusadara, um, the Assistant Youth Imam Solahuddin Abbas, and then in the Youth Shekat, we have Sami Hanna Mukwaya, Assistant Youth Shekat Abraham uh, Muhammad, and then uh, Health Secretary Dr. Hanan. Namutebikavulu, Assistant Health Secretary is Dr. Aisha Semogere, we have Sports C, uh, Mahad Majiri Jr., Assistant Sports C, um, we have Hamza Semakula and Ferd Buembo, Education and Career Guidance, we have Asma Aida, uh, then as her assistant is Rashida Batanda, then we have got uh, other advisors, uh, senior advisors, Bashir Nabawesi, uh, Ibrahim Sekaja, and Yehara Kavulu. Then we have Vice President North London, uh, Sister Shadia Nuru, Shadia Nuru, Nsubuga, the pilot. You can have, call her the pilot. Then we have Vice President East London, Ibrahim Chintu, Vice President South London, Nawaf Mudde, Vice President Crowley, Ibrahim Atovu. Uh, he's unable to talk now, he has got some electrical um, issue at home. And then we have Vice President Oxford, Sumaya Nabatanzi, Vice President Manchester, um, Muhammad Intambi. Vice President Covent Trade Faiz Chibuka, Vice President Wales and Cardiff, Sheikh Barak, Vice President West London, Rukaya and Huzaima. I don't know, they maybe had a problem with the connection. Vice President Central London, we have Mustafa Nsereko, uh, Food, Nutrition and Logistics, we have got Sister Sogi Amude, then the publicity, we have got uh, Shatra Nakalima, and then uh, we have other council delegates, uh, inshallah, the Tahil, Isa, Shafiq, Bashir, Rayan, Alif, Shamil, Musa, Fahadi, Musa, Zak, and others, inshallah. There are some positions, inshallah, which will be filled, uh, inshallah. Thank you so much for uh, all your, um, that's our, our cabinet, and there will be a handover. You'll see the whole cabinet live at our dinner, inshallah, next month. Allow me at this time to thank you for your time for being here, but let us get a word from our outgoing, outgoing president, uh, President Becca Chini. Your Excellency, you have the microphone. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله على آله وصحبه أجمعين dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I would first of all like to thank the Almighty Allah for enabling us to be here for enabling us to be on this wonderful and amazing journey this is a new beginning and uh, I'm sure it's going to be amazing I would like to thank my outgoing committee, the people I've been able to work with for the past five years, it's been a journey. What a journey it has been from, you know, we've faced so many challenges, but we've had so many great moments. One of our main agendas was to 
for me personally, actually, it's been a pleasure to serve the community. It's been an honor, basically, you know, and it's been amazing. I've been able to grow as a person. I've been able to learn a lot of things, but it has been a pleasure to serve the community. One of the main agendas was to bridge the gap between the young people and the adults. The one, there was no space um, within the community for young people. So we tried to literally create a platform and try and get young people within the United Kingdom engaged within the community activities within our wonderful and amazing community. And also the other thing, main agenda was to also bridge the gaps within us, the youths, because um, we had this thing whereby East against South, North, you know, so we literally, when we were playing football, we used to be up against each other, just literally competing, but we weren't really together. So we were trying to literally see how we can bridge the gap so that we can literally engage with one another a bit more. And um, I would like to congratulate the new members. You know, I would like to congratulate all of you guys. I've seen many of you, you know, these various, various people from different communities, people with various experiences. Well, there will be a transition period where if you need anything, we'll be here trying to literally help you. I know many of you are going to be scared. Many of you don't know what's expected of you or you don't even know what your roles kind of like involve, you know. So definitely we'll be here to kind of like help you through your role and I'm sure you'll be ready to fly. And um, I've seen a lot of educative people. I was able to, with my committee, there was a lot of educated people. There was a lot of wonderful and amazing people, people from various backgrounds. And we've been able to use that experience to try and serve the community. And um, this is gonna be a chance for you to network with the best people within our community because for someone to put themselves up for such a role, for such a position to literally just serve the community where you're not getting paid, someone, that means the number one thing is they have a heart, you know, so they're willing to serve the community. And definitely, definitely, you're gonna learn, you're gonna see what you can literally achieve. And I'm sure you're gonna be able to learn a lot from one another. Um, and it's gonna be a chance for you all to grow as individuals, you know, or even as a group as well. And you're gonna learn so many, so many skills, you know, and I'm sure you're going to impact our community for the good. I've been able to work with Shafiq on so many um, different projects and definitely I'm sure and I reassure you that definitely he's going to be an amazing leader and you're going to be able to learn a lot from him. So definitely you should be, all be excited for a wonderful journey. Um, like I said, it's been an honor for me to serve the community. Um, basically within our community, young people have no voice. So being that you are part of the committee, you're there to create the voice for the young people because so many young people face so many challenges. So many of you have told me most of the challenges that you've been you faced. So definitely you as the committee, you are the ones to raise these voices out. You know, you need to create trust within your amongst yourselves, basically, because so many young people are going to come to you with when they're vulnerable, basically at their most vulnerable stage. So please, if someone someone can if someone tells you a secret or if someone tells you something they're going through, don't go around telling it to anyone else. Do make sure that they've entrusted you to be able to tell you what they're going through. So please just find ways of how you can help you without anyone else knowing. Only those that deserve to know, not every single person. So we need to create trust within the community. Um, leadership is something majority of young people are missing out on. As you can see, many young people literally have no voice like i said many young people don't get to practice leadership but this is a, this is a platform for you guys to practice leadership because in life we need to practice leadership is a key key factor leadership is something that many people don't get a chance to practice but you guys here definitely this is an opportunity for you leadership is not about titles positions or flow charts it is about one life influencing another so you need to be ready to impact other young people because they are going to come to you and they're going to be looking up to you with my experience how i feel right now i feel like i can lead a country because i've been able to literally learn a lot of things i've faced so many challenges i've literally you know i've learned that you don't have to be liked to be in a position that you're in you know you're gonna get people that are not gonna like you you're gonna get people that are going to challenge you as a person but be ready to face those challenges and come out on the other side for the good you know and um, you should all aspire to be leaders so definitely do take up on this chance don't resign don't give up there are so many in the beginning there are times where i feel like uh, no, no no i need to give up you know this is too much but you're gonna face that you're gonna face those challenges but please hang in there and i'm sure we are only all here to help you i'm not gonna go away if you need any help 
you can come to me, but also Shafiq is definitely there. He's got a lot of experience. So definitely when you feel like things are not going well, do reach out to Shafiq. He'll be able to kind of like help you and pull you up so that you can be able to do your role. Um, just be ready to serve, you know, like I said, it's not just a position. It's not going to be easy, but the benefits are vast. The benefits, are, there's a lot of benefits that you're going to see. You, you might not be able to see them now, but definitely on the other side, you're going to be able to see them and um i've seen a lot of professionals on the on the panel literally this is you know there's a lot of experience you know a lot of people from different backgrounds do tap onto this because so many pe different people have different skills you know so the the more skills you attain if you see someone that's got something you don't know ask them how they did it ask them how the, you can learn it as well definitely any skill that someone has you can also learn it so be ready to receive because you're going to receive a lot of knowledge and be ready to also pass it on to others because that's the main thing we need to create a platform where we tap onto these professionals tap onto these skills that we have within the community so that other people can benefit from them because we have a lot of vulnerable young people within our community we have so many people from our community that are in prison so many of them feel like they want to kill themselves i've had a lot of young people telling me they want to kill themselves but you have to find ways of how you can reach out and help them before it's too late also, young people out there, please do reach out to this committee. They've given their time. They've given themselves up there to be able to serve you. So please, parents, do work with this committee so that you can literally help them help your children. Because as young people, these young people have seen challenges that you as parents have not seen. So they will know whatever challenges your parents, your young people are going through. So please do help them. They will do stuff with them. Do reach out to them and use their services because there's no point in them putting themselves up and then you're not going to literally um, be able to tap onto those services. We're tired of losing so many young people. We're tired of seeing flowers on the floor. You know, when you walk on the streets of the UK, you know, where everything should be, this is the first world country, but then you see flowers on the floor and then you see another picture of a black boy, another picture of a black girl. It is actually disappointing. It's very sad, but this is something that we're trying to stop. And um, like I said, the youth have no voice. So as a committee, please, please, please do help these young people get a voice. I can see so many of you have confidence. So help the young people that you're serving be able to have that confidence as well so that they can reach out, so that they can face the community, so they can face the world with a confidence face so that we can stop all the challenges that we're facing from other communities. Um, if someone confides in you, I would repeat this as my last point. If someone confides in you, please do not go around talking about their issue because people are going to come to you at their most vulnerable stage. Please do take that into, do think about that. So please, if someone comes to you for help, please do not go around telling other people their problems because you might literally tip them over the age. And I would like to remind you guys, we have a radio platform which is in East London, which is a 75 dub radio. Please do tap into it. If you feel like you wanna improve on your speaking, if you feel like you wanna improve on your confidence, if you feel like you wanna have a voice, that's the platform that's there for you as a people to kind of like tap into so that we can have build it and have a platform where we can have a voice. So me as a person, it helped me in terms of in improve on my confidence and my speaking because when you go out there and um, you face the world you're going to be able to project yourself you're going to need to literally be able to face the world but you have to be confident and um, i would like to remind you we have a dinner on the 7th of may please do buy a ticket i would like to see every single person that's been elected and also maybe your family members as well because this is a wonderful journey that you've taken on and uh, you're going to learn a lot of things but please do enjoy it do enjoy it because yeah People are going to be looking up to you guys, so definitely should be nice. And tonight, hopefully, everyone after here, you're heading to East London. We have a dance that hopefully some people have started arriving. Right now, we're heading to East London. We have a dance today where we want to break our fast together because after COVID, we've not seen many of you for a very long time. So tonight, hopefully, we're going to be able to see all of you. There are going to be prizes, cash prizes. There's going to be quizzes. So hopefully, you're going to be ready to take part in there and I'm sure many people here have already started making their way there and I look forward to seeing all of you there tonight inshallah well in a couple of, well yeah very shortly actually but thank you thank you very much to every single person that's been here but I pray Allah enables you to go through this journey hopefully you can ease the challenges and make all the good literally 
so that you can reap from the goods that are within this process that you're in. But do, do enjoy it and be a part of the community. Also, you have so many friends out there. Do entice them, do call them. So Because one of the main things is for you guys to bring all your friends, bring all your young people to come and be part of the community. Because tomorrow, you are going to be the leaders of UMC. Tomorrow, you are going to be the ones that people are looking up to. So please, please do enjoy it. And good luck. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, President Bek. By the how many times did you try to resign and then we stopped you? Because <laughs> you, 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 you don't, don't, don't. <laughs> you, definitely, must, definitely a lot of times. It's not easy. Many people, by the way, many people are actually, they, uh, they ask me, they have never done that role. For you, you became a president when you have never been a president before. What advice do you give to them? Because some of them, like, maybe they are not so sure because they have never done it before. But for you, you are like the pioneer president. The mm -hmm. no structure, no nothing. Basically, you started you, you with your team. You started it to, to be where it is. And now they are coming in. They have never done. They have never been leaders before. Uh, how, 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 what advice do you to give them? One thing is no everyone is going to like you at the beginning. No everyone is going to be, listen, no, no everyone is going to agree with what you're saying. But the thing is, the good thing about having so many different views is because you might have an idea and you have it literally, in, you've got something in your mind, but then someone else is going to come and spin it a different way and you might not like that. And then maybe you might say no and then you're going to literally, but you're not going to, you're not, you're not always going to agree. That's one thing I'm going to give you. That's the one advice I'm going to give you. You're not always going to agree on the same issue. You're, there are going to be challenges. Don't think this thing is going to be a fairy tale where everyone agrees, yes, let's do this, let's do this. No, no. Someone is going to come in and say something that you're not going to be able to agree with, but be ready to agree to disagree. Be able, be ready to meet in the middle. Be ready to literally take on new ideas be ready to see things in a different way you know so it's not an easy journey and also be ready for people to not like you people might not like you but then once people get to know you and get to because most of you have never met each other most of you don't even know how one speaks so you are going to literally meet people that are going to be a different way to what you used to be ready to welcome that and be ready to learn how other people operate because you're not all going to be the same you're all going to be different so just be ready to take everything in it's not easy but definitely do enjoy it like i said so what, and, what's your next you know, challenge sorry what, i know you said you will go now you feel that you are child what's your next challenge you want to replace boris Musebe, Museveni? Well, what's your people are asking what's baker's next step i think my next step you'll be able to surely i'm not i'm not ready to introduce it but definitely surely you're going to be able to know about it is hopefully it's something and hopefully all of you will be able to support but definitely there's something coming up and there's something i'm spicing up cooking up and hopefully you'll be able to support inshallah definitely okay uh baker um are we able to, to call ashraf to come and say salam by the way baker and ashraf have been i know ashraf is very good in hiding now i mean i don't know whether he's here are you able to pull I'll try to see. I think it went off. I tried to look at what because Baker and Ashraf are going to be like kind of guiding the is, new. Is he on? Now, let me see. Because I was looking, he wasn't. Can you see him? Is he on? Because I was, I was seeing him before. I wanted to call him up, but I couldn't see him. I think he's come off because he was driving. I don't know. Ashraf, can you raise your hand? I don't know. I tried to look him up on the thing because we've been kind of like, I've got literally. Sorry. That's it. Wa alaikum salam wa I can't see him. I, I can't. Yeah, we make a headache past so that people can see Ashraf's face. Please, Ashraf, that's it. <laughs> Ashraf, to who's the who's the command? Who and then what? What do you have to do to the new leaders? Salam alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, greetings to all the new members and the new committee. And uh, yeah. Just want to thank everybody for uh, your efforts uh, and your nominations. Uh, and uh, hopefully you're going to learn a lot. Uh, like our brother Becker said, um, it's, it's not an easy job. Uh, a lot of us, we do thankless things in the background, um, you know, uh, and we do it, you know, out of love for the community. So, um, uh, you know, a lot of you, you're going to be meeting each other for the first time, just like when we joined a couple of years ago. It was the first time we met people from different regions. We know the people locally that we see on a daily basis, but 
we don't know everybody else. And uh, we started this thing from scratch and uh, we've uh, done some work over the past four or five years um, and learned a lot. And uh, yeah, I think we're at a point where uh, the, the structure is in place. Uh, we've got good people in the community, good leaders, and uh, hopefully uh, that work can continue uh, with the new committee, inshallah. Uh, myself uh, and Berka and uh, Shafiq uh, will, will be here to uh, assist during the transition period. Uh, and uh, if you have any queries, um, issues, uh, you can always approach us. We're very available. You can contact us. Our numbers are publicly available in the WhatsApp chat and you can reach out to us and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll support you in the best way possible, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. That is our outgoing general secretary, Abadakolo Mimogu Amanya. You know, thank you so much. You've done a wonderful job. Now I think now we now I pass over the mantle and you to an Ashraf because we we should always all of us have a duty of like assisting the, the coming generation, the coming generation. So uh yes, Ashraf, I think you'll agree with me. There are a lot of benefits that even for young people to know each other. I think that's a very great benefit. I think you agree with me. Yeah, of course. Um, you know. Even in the Quran, Allah tells us he created us in different nations and tribes uh, so that we can get to know each other. And even though some of us are from the same nation or the same tribe, uh, we don't know each other. And, uh, you know, uh, through the community work that we do, we, we've built brotherhood. These events that we've done, such as tonight's event and the dinner ball and stuff like that. The whole point of it is building that brotherhood, that love uh, for each other and our community and our deen. So, inshallah, that's what we aim to do. Okay, Barak Allah uh, Fikum. Those are those two people you see, Ashraf and Baker, they are going to, I think their role is going to still continue, especially to guide in this new cabinet. Uh, and their always are going to be available. Thank you so much. We are, I'm very proud of you guys, uh, Shafiq, and the, the whole of your cabinet. You've done a wonderful job. And may Allah reward you. May Allah uh, give you easy life uh, in, um, and to accept you. Because it's well, lies a lot of sacrifice, but it's worth. Because if you don't, you are not there for the committee. Who's going to be there? Because our fathers. Kakati imposes a cassette can be and that we have finished. Nainga and Kueva Zanyo. Baker, by the way, you have a people are not clear. Ticket, which number do they call to get a ticket? Because you have to be specific. Ticket, how much is the, the college? Yes, do what you have. Do what you want for the um definitely the tickets are VIP and 55 pounds and um the normal ticket is 35 pounds. But if you're a group of 10, you can buy tickets for 30 pounds, which is 300 pounds. If you're a group of 10, share okay. the number they need to call to buy the tickets. Uh, let me sh on top of my head, I would share my, I'll share my I'll, let yeah. me share my number if anyone needs a ticket. I'm gonna share my number in the group. By the way, all the new cabinet, you have to be there on the dinner because it's going to be handover. You will be seeing other people outgoing. That's when you are going to be getting your uh, handover, your file. Beck, I'll, I'll request you to ask all your outgoing cabinet to prepare their folders for handover, inshallah, next month. Uh, but you. we ask the parents, and the, um, there are some people I haven't seen, especially from North London, uh, Wembo's son and others. Maybe we'll see them. Nenga was at them now. Um, inshallah, Shafi. I think you, someone wants Abu to say Mustafa something. His hand up. I don't know if he wants to say something. His hand is up. Abu oh, please, oh, we're go, heading to East London. Yeah, Let's go ahead to East London. Abu Mustafa, did you want to say something? No, subhanallah. Forgive me for coming back one more time. Yet we finished, but I forgot something really important that I wanted to say. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank the people that are outgoing, uh, you know, the likes of President, the President, <laughs> Baker, mashallah, and uh, Ashraf, uh, you know, all the other people, subhanAllah, that have been doing a great job with us. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you with the best, ajran azim, with the greatest of rewards. You know, you've done a good job, subhanAllah. Uh, and also, I just want to remind everyone that is on here, subhanAllah, I don't know how I forgot to say this. We've got sessions, uh, you know, on this Zoom that you guys logged in every Monday, you know, especially in Ramadan now that everyone is, uh, you know, mashallah, trying their best. Please tune in every Monday, 6 p.m. UK time. 
Uh, I don't know the people that for, come uh, in the other, other countries, but you can check the time in your countries. But UK time is 6 p.m. Ugandan time is 8 p.m. We start those sessions every Monday. Please tune in. We've got classes, lectures. We get students of knowledge uh, to love the elite. People from Medina University come on here and, and they do the lectures and classes, you know. Uh, so we learn Islamic studies basically and Islamic classes in English. So some of you might be thinking, oh, we don't even have no English classes. What's the point? It's always in Uganda. So please come and join. And also, uh, we've got one on Wednesday as well. That's Quran uh, session. We uh, recite Quran and normally our half in uh, Riyadh. He would listen to them and perhaps correct the mistakes. And also we do the tafsir. Obviously there is another Friday one with Dr. Kasato, but this one on Wednesday, we do tafsir and we try to speak in English to make sure that the other young people are covered as well. That's the only thing I wanted to share. Please join on those days. Barakallah fikum. Barakallah. You make sure you're there, 7th of May, four o'clock. In Mitcham, South London, Chuck 89. The details, please. We're going to share a flyer. I'm sure Dr. Kasato created a new group for you guys. Definitely, we're going to share a flyer in there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hopefully, do also pass on the message because one of the main things you're going to be doing is also promoting your own events. So please do make sure you do turn up and support, definitely. And also be ready to yeah, say a thing or two at the dinner and also enjoy it. Inshallah, the new of course, my number in the group. If anyone needs a ticket, please do ask others to also buy tickets as well. So see you on that day, inshallah. You said how much is the ticket? 35? The ticket's 50 pounds, 55 pounds for VIP. And um, the normal ticket is 35 pounds. And also, if you're a group of 10, um, you can pay 300 pounds, which works out as 30 pounds each. Uh, uh, and what's on the menu? What are they going to eat? On the menu, there's a lot of things on the menu. A lot of things on the menu. There's rice, chicken, VIPs get matoke, they get extra food. A lot of things. I, I can't say. It's, it's a long list, Dr. Kassad. You know, so uh, uh, also uh, this is a chance to celebrate Eid as a community as well, because that's the week that Eid uh, is in as well. So how do we man, is there a on the menu? Well, if they can add five pounds, we can provide Kaunga on their ticket, specifically for that individual, definitely. But uh, dinner is a very wonderful thing. Uh, uh, for the new cabinet, inshallah, make sure that you buy your, uh, you'll have to, to dress smartly, inshallah. It's a very wonderful occasion, wallah, you, you love it. It is a very wonderful one. Tuiwazanyo, uh, tuiwazanyo, alhamdulillah. Uh, we come to the end of our elections, inshallah. I uh, thank you so much. Uh, may Allah guide our new leaders. Uh, and may Allah help all our young people uh, who are having, who have challenges in life. May Allah make their life easy. May Allah um, give us peace in all our families, in our relationship, in our studies, in our work. If you have any problem there, you are suffering from a young person, please get in touch. We have so many leaders. And on behalf of UMC, on behalf of myself and Hajat Huda, I uh, will thank you all for all the support you give us. We, the adults, we are there to give young people a shoulder to lean on. Uh, we are there to help them to inspire to achieve the best of their ability because they are talented. As you can bear witness, I think you've, you've had our young people, they are very, very bright. So we are there to give them support. Our work is to support the coming generation, inshallah. Maybe sing at now, you'll get up dinner, inshallah. Baker, what, 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 how are you going to dress on dinner? Oh, I bought my suit last year, so definitely, hopefully, it will be something. It's going to be nice. Inshallah, anyway. So definitely, hopefully, you all dress appropriately. Inshallah, we look forward to seeing you on there. All oh, nice and happy. A suit, I am a young woman to get out more pre market to glamour suit. You are not testing your doctors, the young girl, young, so I'm going to get a young lady. Okay, but now, inshallah, Katia, I said I can all the roads are leading to 75 Derby Road. Um, it's London, a new youth activity. Trians and your trians again. Uh, what the salam alaikum or Ahmadullah, you were back at. Walaikum salam or flower.